All right, it is time to test the ruggedness and durability of these multimeters in some somewhat torturous methods. And it's actually why I waited until uh, I'd done all the individual reviews to do this because there's a chance that some of these tests uh, will actually destroy the meters. And well, we're about to find out. Uh, right now I have the Innova plugged into my mains. It's on uh, AC volts showing 115, which is coming out of the wall and that is about right. And I am just going to turn it all the way around to all the different ranges and make sure nothing blows up and that it continues functioning properly. So here we go. Yep. Guess we'll go ahead and come over here too because you know there's um, this is kind of aim for general use so people could have this in a junk drawer and decide to uh, be dumb and plug it into their mains and then accidentally switch it over to here so let's see what happens yep still works fine so Innova survived good job Okay, next up we have the Amprobe AM530. I have it plugged into the mains, and as you can see, it's reading 115 volts AC, and this one does default to AC. So now I'm just going to switch it through the range. We'll see what happens. Yep. But we're not going to stop there. We'll go all the way through all the ranges. Yep, works just as you would expect. Amprobe gets a thumbs up. All right, next up is the Unity UT61E. Now these are notorious for being a little suspect when it comes to surviving this type of test. Uh, people have blown them just by having them plugged into the mains in the uh, frequency measurement range. So uh, there's actually a decent chance this one might die, but here we go. Oh, it's doing something weird. Yep. And some of these, you might see that the voltage takes a second to kind of recover back to uh, a proper reading. And I think some of that could be the uh, PTC inside heating up. And then as they cool off, um, they'll start to close back. Um, so yeah, well, the resistance in them drops, drops back down once they cool off, but that's why they're called PTC, positive temperature coefficient. But uh, yeah, I've, give it a second, uh, looks good. So uh, I don't know if the old Unities were just designed slightly differently, but this one uh, survived mains on, well, everything just fine. So Unity UT61E, thumbs up. Though it did make some really weird sounds when we had it in the uh, frequency measurement range, but uh, it survived nonetheless. Okay, next up is the UEI UTLDM2. Have it plugged into the mains. You can see it gets reading 114.8 volts, and I'm just going to switch it through its different ranges, and we'll see how it behaves. Oh, weird! It shut itself off. Huh. <laughs> the battery light blinked for a second. This time it did not shut itself off. Hmm, seems to survive it, but that's really bizarre that the battery light comes on when we switch it to resistance measurement mode. UEI, thumbs up. All right, next up is a circuit test, DMR6550. I have it plugged into the mains, AC volts, reading 114.6, and here we go. Hmm. 
Oh man, that range switch is horrendous. Circuit test survived. Thumbs up. Range test. Or range switch. Thumbs down. All right. I got the south wire plugged into the mains. Set the AC volts. 114.5 is what it's reading. And let's put it through its paces. Whoa. Look at that. It is not happy. But it is slowly recovering. But let's go through the... Oh, it's only negative 2849 Celsius. It's good to know. This thing really bugs out in the uh, resistance mode. But we go back to AC and it slowly starts to recover ish yeah you can tell the I'm guessing it's a PTC cooling off and the resistance going back down but Southwire survives it acts a little bizarre but point of the test is to see if they survive or not and they do alright got the Unity UT61D plugged into the mains volts AC it's reading 115.2 which is about right and let's see what happens not happy whatever it's doing I don't know why I bother switching into the current ranges because we don't have anything plugged into those jacks but I guess I'm just being thorough yep UNI-T UT61D thumbs up all right, next up is the Hold Peak HP 760H. As you can see, it is not even reading correctly, and we haven't even torture tested it yet. But to be thorough, I'm gonna swipe it through the ranges, and I guess we'll just find out, find uh, what happens. And uh, it uses temperature from the current jacks and those are shuttered so I actually can't turn it past there but well didn't work before still doesn't work now but I didn't I don't smell anything it didn't go boom so uh, I'm gonna rate this uh, piece of crap all right next up is the tech power TP40 it's reading 114.8 volts or so which is about right It's not happy. But it works. It just seems to shut itself off. Well, maybe not this time. Yeah, Tech Power TP40 survived, even though this one technically the continuity test something is completely broken with it. Uh, aside from that, seems okay. Okay, I have the XTech EX430 plugged into the mains. Here we go. Man, 3,700 Fahrenheit. It is toasty in here. It survived. X-Tech thumbs up. All right, next up is the Fluke 107, which I believe is based off of the Fluke 101 in the US. 
If one hair were to survive, I had to put my money on one single meter, it would probably be this one. Yep, just as you would expect from Fluke, survived, no problems at all. It gets a thumbs up. Next up, BK Precision, here we go. What is going on? Yep. Yeah, it acts really weird, but it does survive. So yeah, BK Precision, thumbs up. All right, next up is the Klein MM2000. Here we go. Really love the display on this thing. Whoa. Klein survived. No problems whatsoever. Thumbs up. All right, next up is the TechPower TP2844R, and this is identical to the Digitech version of this multimeter. Here we go. Survive no problems whatsoever. Thumbs up. Last but not least, Radio Shack is not getting a good connection. There we go. 114.7 volts, here we go. Just realized how bizarre the uh, layout of the ranges are on this one. I never really noticed. It's got current in the middle. Usually it's on one end or the other, with the exception of the ones where off is in the middle. Yep, Radio Shack survived, no problems whatsoever. Thumbs up. And that was the last one, and you know, as you would expect, pretty much all these are gonna survive this test, and unless you get into the really, really cheap and shady ones, I think that you're really not gonna have to worry about it. But uh, it's worth testing anyway, so. Hope you enjoyed, now it's time for me to take these out to the garage and see how they do when they get dropped.